I created this interior scene in D5 Render. And in this video, I will walk through how I did it in five easy steps, starting by effortlessly connecting your 3D model to D5 Render, and then later on using one of D5's most recent AI tools to elevate your final rendering. You will first need to go to the D5 Render website and download the LiveSync tool for your specific 3D modeling software. So now that I've downloaded it, for me, it creates a tab within Rhino, which I can then click to LiveSync my Rhino and D5 Render models together. Now that we have the model set up, the next step is to apply materials. But before we get too far, I need to make sure you're applying materials correctly. I will first show you the incorrect way to do it. As you can see, the material just applies to everything, which is what we don't want. Instead, you should individually or as a group pre-assign colors or materials to everything. And so when you bring it into D5, you get results like this. And the first things I'm going to do is create a scene. And before I add any materials, I just want to get kind of the perspective that I want set up. The quality right now doesn't look super good. I think the UV is a little bit off. So what I'll do is adjust the triplanar and turn on UV randomizer to make it a little bit less patchy. What's really nice about the material library is you can just quickly search and it'll give you all the similar assets. I've also turned on the filter for green materials so that these are materials everyone can use regardless of what version you have of D5 Render. And if you don't want to search, they have different categories as well. I'm just going to just find a wood material for these wood beams up ahead. So this one seems like a pretty raw material that I can make work. It doesn't look quite right initially, but as I did previously, I'll just turn on triplanar and it helps adjust with that UV map. Sometimes you have to rotate it. Um, as you'll see later, you might have to scale the material as well, but now it now looks a lot better up there. And if you want to replicate a material that's already made, you just go up to this left side of the screen, use the eyedropper to select existing, and then go up to the right hand column, click the duplicate tool, and then you can redrop that material. This is a lot faster than having to go back in, find the material that you're using, and then reapply it. What will happen is when you redrag and drop it, is the map will be incorrect and you have to adjust all those settings again. Because the materials are cloud-based, you have to click on it, let it download first before you can start to drag and drop. But it's super easy. Once it's downloaded, you just click on it and you can place and so you get a sense of what it looks like to create your own material. It's it's very easy as well in D5 Render. Click on the other tab and then go to basic displacement material. Uh, you just drag and drop that. It's a white material initially, but I tend to go to websites like Polyhaven to download materials like this that give you all of the various maps that you need. And you can download the material in 1K all the way up to 6K. So this is the free library that Polyhaven has of all these different materials that you can import. So that's a huge resource that I use, and that's what I use to download this material. Using the material batch tool, all you have to do is select all the material maps and then open it, and D5 Render will assign them to the proper map type. So let's say you wanted to enhance the material or you wanted to create your own. You could use the AI generated texture maps. And what you would do if you created your own is you just upload the initial base color and then you would select this AI texture map generator and it would generate all the AI normal maps, the roughness maps and the height maps on its own. One thing you'll notice is the scale is a little off, so we're gonna have to go back and adjust that a little bit. I feel like this looks pretty good where it's at. There's still a few things that I wanted to work on. Okay, we'll go work on these shelves. I think wood in that area would probably look the best. Uh, let's go with this yellow maple now i'm not liking the wood on the back of that shelf. you can see over here on the right it's the the same material as the rest of the wall so i can't actually change that in d5 render i'm gonna have to go back into rhino and change that because of the structure of my materials so all i will have to do is just change the layer that they're associated with super easy then i'll resync that to d5 and now you can see that all I have to do is change that material. It's a pretty easy process and it makes it nice that you don't have to go and save each time when you go back and forth between Rhino and D5. Now that we got all the materials, let's move on to placing some assets. Next, I'm going to add some interior assets just to populate the scene. These shelves, they feel a little bit empty, right? So let's go in and just add some stuff on the shelving to make it feel like someone actually lives here, right? It's kind of like you're staging a house in a way. Obviously, details like that are not going to make a huge difference. But what's nice is, as you're seeing when I place an object, 
it's able to identify like the base of that asset and connect it with another element within the project. So you're not always trying to figure out, oh, like how high do I go? Let's add some furniture. Let's look for a sofa. Yeah, this one seems a little bit bigger. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have that, we can place it in here. I'll kind of fast forward this spot where I'm um, adding assets. Next up, we're going to move on to setting up the lighting and then the outside scene. Some of the most forgotten tips when it comes to interior renderings is the exterior lighting and the exterior scene. The first thing I'm going to do is just add like a rectangle light outside the window. I'm just going to tilt it a bit, shining it inside. I'm going to turn the attenuation radius up fairly high, but the intensity doesn't have to be quite as high. And then I'll go to the other side and do something pretty similar. I'm gonna raise it up, make it a little bit wider too, because it can be bigger with a lower intensity and a higher attenuation radius. So if we go back inside, you won't see much of a difference in the lighting until we turn off the exposure. The lighting of the scene always becomes better when you turn off auto exposure, it just makes it feel more realistic. So when I turn off and you know, on the light, you can see subtle differences in the assets that are placed. Now one thing that'll make a lot bigger difference are adding some trees. So we'll go into the nature tab and let's, let's go ahead and find something to add. And one thing that I do is I typically add trees, but I don't add them how they should be. I'll drop them down a little bit, especially the ones towards the back of the scene. So I'll put these in the background and I'll drop them down so that you don't really see the ground plane very much and then it somewhat disguises what is behind. But you always want to make sure that when you're adding like a foreground tree, um, for example, something like this, you kind of keep it isolated so that the shadows can stay true to what they are. And then one tip to copy and move objects is you hold shift as you drag and that just allows you to duplicate that item. So let's go back inside. Let's move this tree over here and down a bit just to disguise that background. We're not seeing any really difference of the interior space. You can see somewhat of the shadow coming through, but what we'll wanna do is go to HDR skies. These are some of the better skies within D5 render, especially with the update in their global illumination. Let's just go with the midday for now. You won't really see much of a difference until you turn on the sun. And there you can start to see the shadows. We'll want to rotate it a bit. So right there you can start to see you can start to see the shadows from the tree on the curtains. Um, let's just kind of move it around a bit. Now I'm thinking I'm gonna have the light come from the back side of the space so you can see kind of where it's looking right now. It's just projecting onto the floor and some of the sidewall. Let's see. I like it right there. But even though you're not gonna see the trees, I always like to add a couple trees behind the scene so that you can get the effect of some shadows. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust some of the rendering settings. We're kind of adjusting some of the sun settings to get the lighting that we wanted. I typically turn up the color temperature for the sun and then turn down the color temperature for the sky and to make it a little bit cooler sky color and a warmer sun color. For this instance, we're not going to mess with the weather. I think the lighting strength is pretty good as well. We'll go over to effects. And right now, the auto exposure is on. I'll go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to refresh the scene. So let me do it before and after again. That's with the auto exposure. And then that's turning it off. It gets a little bit brighter, um, more of a realistic light. Typically, I don't adjust too many settings. In this instance, I might turn down the contrast a bit. Mess with the highlight and I typically turn off bloom to little high on the white balance but a lot of the settings are, are fairly good a lot of it just comes down to choosing 
the right HDR sky and rotation and adding a lot of things around it because D5 does a pretty good job with the lighting and not forcing you to use too much effort. As you can see, I made a couple changes behind the scenes, just moving around some of the assets, as well as I did add a new HDRI sky, which I ended up downloading from Polyhaven. That was the same website that I got some high quality PBR textures for free. And you can get these HDRI skies for free as well at Polyhaven. Um, that just improved the lighting of the scene and I liked it a little bit more than what I had in the past, but it wasn't anything new, so I didn't want to waste your time on that. Well, let's hop into the final rendering. So you go up top to the right hand side to click on image and you can choose the aspect ratio. I'll go with this 16.9. It's pretty, it's pretty standard. And then I'm not going to want the channels, but you can have the option to have like the different depth maps and all that downloaded as well. Um, but I do want the AI push channel. I'll go with you know, a 6K rendering, and that's the highest you can go if you want to do the AI enhance at the end. And then that way it won't take super long for me to <laughs> render that image. Um, I'll go ahead and click that, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Now that it's done rendering, let's go to the AI post-processing to give it a little extra spice. Okay, so with this, you're able to use the AI enhancer you can use the AI style transfer, which allows you the ability to change the style. This is more recommended for exterior renderings, um, but you can use like watercolor, cartoon style, or there's some more realistic styles you can use, or you can upload a reference image. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to use the AI enhancer. I'm not going to do anything too fancy. Um, I'll do about like a 0.5 weight. It's not anything drastic, but it enhances just the little details of the image, which just overall make it 10 times better in quality. So when you look at the details of the different parts of the image, it's, it's a lot better. This is the before and after final results. So before, uh, so there's some enhancement in shadow and lighting, as well as the, the depth of some of the texture maps. In addition, you can also add some effects. You can adjust the sharpening, the noising, or the transparency. But I think it looks all right the way it is, so I'm going to download it. And this is the final result. Comment below what tips and tutorials you want to see next.